judgment. The mountain shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. Amen. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. Mm. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. He shall come down like rain upon the moan grass as showers that water the earth. Hmm. In his days shall the righteous flourish and abundance of peace so long as the moon endure. Mm -hmm. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river unto the ends of the earth. Hmm. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him and his enemies shall lick the dust. The kings of Spain and of the Isle shall bring presents. The kings of the Middle East and Africa shall offer gifts. Mm -hmm. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. Mm -hmm. For he shall deliver the needy when he cry, the poor also, and him that have no helper. He shall spare the poor and needy, and shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence, and precious shall be their blood in his sight. And all of you bear record that he is in the process. He's already redeemed you from the old man, and he's in the process of doing what? Redeeming you from the deceit and violence that, that, that so easily beset us. See, this is the reason why he's given us the increase of the spirit so that we'll be able to withstand the things that are going to come upon us because we know from reading the great tribulation period the thing that's going to take place rather than the great tribulation period. We know that we're going to be in big trouble. We're going to be in the biggest trouble we ever had in our life, and we know it. See, we're doing all right right now. You know, things going pretty. Just wait. Just wait. The only way that Yahweh can get us to do what he wants us to do is put us under his foot. Mm -hmm. As long as we think we're doing all right, you know, we're going to pray. We're going to fake it doing a lot of things, and a lot of things people are going to do in sincerity. But the only way that he can really get us to turn to him with our whole heart and soul and to seek his face is to put us under his foot. Once he put that pressure on it, the first thing we say, and we all know we bear witness of it, soon as something dire happened to us, what do we say? Oh, God. Oh, God, help us, right? Well, ask yourself one question. What did you do to help him? Charity begins at home and spread abroad. If he's our father and we're his children, then we got a great charge here in this city of Atlanta. But go ahead and read, brother. Psalms 72, verse 15. And he shall live, and to him shall be given of the goal of Sheba. Prayer also shall be made for him continually, and daily shall he be praised. There shall be a handful of corn in the earth upon the top of the mountains. Mm -hmm. The fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon, mm -hmm. and there the city shall flourish like the grass of the earth. Praise shall. His name shall endure forever. His name shall be contained as long as the sun. And men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Mm -hmm. Blessed be Yahweh Elohim, the Elohim of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Amen. Psalms 102 and verse 12 through verse 28. Psalms 102 and verse 12 through verse 28. Verse 12. But thou, O Yahweh, shall endure forever, and your remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Judah, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. For thy servant take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of Yahweh and all the kings of the earth, your glory. Mm -hmm. When Yahweh shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. 
He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come. And the people which shall be created shall praise Yahweh. Amen. So we're talking about a new creation then, right? The people that shall be created, right? This is what's happening now. You're in the process of being recreated. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last man, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. And if we're the children of the true and living God, then truly we're going to have to be uh, uh, these spiritual new creatures, uh, these creatures that's mentioned in Ezekiel 37 chapter, and the, and the same one that the Messiah showed his apostles when he appeared to them, we're going to have to be that. Ain't no doubt about it, because if we don't, then we still have a chance. But why try to be a doorkeeper keeper? when you can be a prince. If you shoot for a doorkeeper, you might miss that mark. Yeah. You see, we have a tendency to set our, our, our sights middle ways. No, no, no. Set your sights on the throne of God itself and you might do something. Go on and read, brother. Psalms chapter 102, verse 19. For he have looked down from the height of his sanctuary from heaven did Yahweh behold the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to death, to declare the name of Yahweh in Judah and his plague praise in Jerusalem when the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve Yahweh. Mm -hmm. He weakened my strength in the way. He shortened my days. I said, O oh my Elohim, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Mm -hmm. Of old have you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shall you change them, and they shall be changed. But you are the same, and thy years shall have no end. Mm -hmm. The children of your servant shall continue and their seed shall be established before you. Amen and amen. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 9 through chapter 9 and verse 8. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 9 through chapter 9 and verse 8. If we associate ourselves, when you read the beginning of this chapter, you find out that he was talking about the Assyrians coming in uh, uh, upon the children of Israel. And, uh, and, and, and when he starts here, we can understand that what he's saying is that if we associate ourselves with the nations, we're going to be broken in pieces. Mm -hmm. Just like the nations. Why? Because the nations are going to be broken in pieces. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. He says, chapter 8, verse 9. Associate yourselves, O you people, and you shall be broken in pieces. And give ear, all you of our countries. Gird yourselves, and you shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and you shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand. But Elohim is with us. This is why I tell people, you know, whatever comes up in your life that's adverse uh, uh, toward the thing that you do and the thing that you believe in, don't worry about it. Yahweh's going to take care of his business sooner or later, right? So let's not take counsel with these people. You know why? The Elohim of Israel is with us. You can tell by the knowledge and understanding that you have, that you've acquired, that the Elohim of Israel is with us. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 11. For Yahweh spoke thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say you not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear you their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify Yahweh of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. Hmm. And he shall be for a sanctuary, 
but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. This is why we have a whole lot of things that happen against us because verse 13 said, uh, 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 sanctify Yahweh of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both of the house of Israel for gin and for a snare unto the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble, they're going to stumble at that stumbling stone, and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony and see the law among my disciples. This. Huh? Sure, sure. And we are still building upon that same foundation. But people don't understand that this is the foundation, that we are, we are but flesh building upon a spiritual foundation. So what people have a tendency to do is this. A lot of folks don't believe. A lot of folks find A lot of folks think it's just something to be socializing about. When it's not, it's for our life. It's for our life. We can believe what we want to, but we have a whole legacy to show us that everything Yahweh said that he was going to do to our fathers, he's carried out. And right now, we in uh, uh, Deuteronomy uh, uh, 28 and verse 63 through verse 68, the rest of the curses that has to be uh, 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 delivered upon our people. So Yahweh meant what he said. The thing of it is, is this. We have to seek after him. In order for you to seek after him, you have to do it in how? In truth and in righteousness that has been imputed to you because there's none of us righteous. Go ahead and read, brother. He says, chapter 8, verse 17. <clears throat> and I will wait upon Yahweh that hideth his face from the house of Yaakov, and I will look for him. Hmm. Behold. I and the children whom Yahweh have given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from Yahweh of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their Elohim for the living, to the dead, mm -hmm. to the law, and to the testimony? If they don't speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Mm. And they shall pass through it, hardly be stead and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look up. Right. It says to the law, verse 20, and to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. Although they're going to call themselves Israelites, there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it, hardly be stead and hungry. Of what? For the word, to hear the truth in the word of God. Because let me tell you something. Yahweh going to give you what he wants you to have. But guess what? If you don't use it uh, according to the intent that, that, uh, that he gave it to you personally, he'll ball it right up on you. He'll ball you right up on you. You think you're serving God and end up and find that your God is the adversary of the devil. You know him by the fruits. Read, brother. He says, chapter 8, verse 22. And they shall look unto the earth, and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. And when we look upon the earth today, we can see that all the religious religions, the nations have put all these various religions and so forth on the earth, and the earth is tr truly full of darkness. It is truly full of darkness. This is why we should always find the time to give Yahweh the glory and honor that's due to his holy name that he's brought us up, up out of that darkness. You know why? Those that are not called are very soon to be driven into gross darkness. Mm -hmm. See, we got this thing a little early. We got it a little early so that Yahweh would have, uh, give us the time that we need to get the people in place that he needs in place. So when this deal really starts going down here in America, he'll have somebody here that's letting the folks know what's going on to lead them to the shepherd's tent. See. Go ahead and read, brother. He says, chapter 9, verse 1, Nevertheless, them shall not be as such, 
be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more, aggrievi did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. Mm -hmm. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. Haven't you? <clears throat> Haven't you? Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them have the light shine. Amen. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy and harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Mm -hmm. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. <laughs> For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. And the bodies is going to be for the fuel for the fire, right? When we read uh, uh, the prophet Ezekiel, we'll find out that at war, the war of Armageddon, the flesh is going to consume away while they stand up on their feet, right? Mm -hmm. So the bodies is going to be the fuel of the fire. Go ahead, brother. Verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Elohim, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. Even forever. Amen. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts will perform this. Mm -hmm. The Adonai sent a word into Yaakov, and it have lighted upon Israel. Okay, my brother, uh, uh, St. John 7, and verse 37 through verse 39. St. John 7, and verse 37 through verse 30, 39. <laughs> just because you believe, but believe as the scripture has said. Many people believe in a Messiah, but they don't know why. They don't know why. They don't know, they don't seem to understand that believing has to prompt you, if, if, if you want salvation, believing have to prompt you to seek the truth in the word of God. And many people don't seek the truth in the word of God. What they do is this, they'll get something and start surmising and before you know it, they got a whole lot of they got a whole lot of intellectualizing going. And who has ever been say, uh, we look and see what the Christians have done. They have intellectualized this book here, uh, the truth in this book, right out of there. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, 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 go ahead and uh, read, brother. Last verse, thirty-nine. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Yahshua was not yet glorified. Okay, John 12 and verse 23 through verse 50, my brother. Sure sing with the choir, man. <laughs> John chapter 12 and verse 23 through verse 50. Verse 23, And Yahshua answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. In other words, you got to put off that old man and really die die to the things of the world so you can bring forth more, more fruit when you die. 
Go ahead, brother. John chapter 12, verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Hmm. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Hmm. Now, a lot of people take that out of context. He says, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall he be also. Well, see, my servants be rather. Well, see, he's in heaven, so that means that we're going to be in heaven. No, 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 no. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there will my servants be. Why? Because the Spirit walks among you. The Spirit of the Messiah walks among you. That's why he's never said. I love you talking about the comforter too, right? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. When I say the spirit, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we deal with. We deal with the comfortable. Comfort. A lot of folks like to say, well, we I deal with Yahweh. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. Even when you get into the second resurrection, the new heaven and the new earth, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Israel and the Messiah was in the new temple of Jerusalem. And there was new heaven created, right? Because Satan had been in the old heaven, right? So there was new heaven created. But all the angels, the Messiah, and the creator of all things was here on earth, right? Then there was a great voice from that new heaven that said, the tabernacle of, uh, of Elohim is with men and he should dwell with them. So if you, if you got your idea that you, uh, in your mind that you're going to be sitting down chit-chatting with Yahweh, you can forget that. He gave us the Holy Spirit to chit chat with us. And we have we even have problems with that. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Steve. Verse Yohanan, chapter twelve, verse twenty seven. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Amen. Yahweh Glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Mm -hmm. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said, an angel spake. Right, the people therefore that stood by heard it. They heard the voice, right? And what did they say? They, they didn't even understand. They said, it thundered. See, everybody's not, every, uh, there's going to be many people that's going to hear the word, but everybody is not going to understand it because like the scripture said, many are called, but few are chosen. See, you have to, you have to, you have to put it in with, within your own mind that you want to worship and serve the true and living God, not just come to church because he said so. If you keep the law because he said so, then at the end of the day, you know that you ain't going to be saved because you're an unprofitable servant. And Yahweh requires increase. He's always required increase. But go ahead and read, brother. Yohanan chapter 12, verse 30. Yah should answer and said, This voice came not because of me, hmm. but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Amen. This he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that the anointed one abideth forever. And how saith thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Yahshua said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. Mm -hmm. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Mm -hmm. While you have light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. These things spoke Yahshua and departed and did hide himself from them. Hmm. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not right. on Right. You know why? He was a man. That's why. I don't care what he did. He was a man. He was a man. This is why he told him, say, look, if you don't believe that I'm him, just believe what the works say. Look at the works. Go ahead, brother. Verse 38. 
that the saying of Esaias the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Adonai, who have believed our report, and to whom have the arm of the Adonai been revealed. Therefore they could not believe, because that Esaias said again, he have blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal right. them. Right, so they'd rather create, keep creating a whole lot of garbage going on, rather than seek the truth of what they're supposed to be about. See, we have to be very, very careful when we attend holy conventions, because holy conventions are just that. Holy convention. You have to check the adversary, the devil, at the door when you come in. Yeah, go ahead and read, brother. Verse 41. These things said he says when he saw his glory and spake of him. Hmm. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. The worst thing can happen to someone is to get put out of the synagogue. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 43. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of Yah. Right. This is why folks go from pillar to post, from here to there, always finding new stuff and so forth, because they love the doctrine of men and the association of men rather than uh, 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 the peace that's brought through the truth of God. But go ahead and read, brother. Verse 44. Yahshua cried and said, He that believeth on me, Believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. Mm -hmm. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And when we listen to the doctrine, that people are, are talking about today, they leave out one, two choice pieces of uh, 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 things that were said by the Messiah in the New Testament. Number one, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Number two, salvation. You don't know what you worship. Mm -hmm. We know what we worship because salvation is of the Jews. Ain't that what he said? These, these, these things came out of his own mouth, and the prophets backed these things up. But when we listen to what man has to say uh, of, uh, of all the other nations, not only have they taught us some strange things that they can't prove uh, uh, in the Old Testament, but yet now they're beginning to take our place. The Gentiles talk about data tribes of Israel. Why? Because of the fact that Jake isn't out there doing what Jake was supposed to do. Jake want to get off work, go home, cool out, watch TV, and everything going to be hunky-dory. But remember, Yahweh required 10% of that 24 hours he gave you that day. Now ask yourself, do you give him 2 hours and 40 minutes each day of your time? I'm not talking about when you're sitting down reading. That's your time. See, I'm talking about do you give him that uh, uh, 2 hours and 40 minutes of each one of your days. I don't care how hard you work. See? That's part of the curses. Do you give him 2.4 hours a day of your time? If you don't, then you're not paying your tithes. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 48. <coughs> he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words have one that judgeth him. The words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Hmm. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Mm -hmm. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. This is what all these so-called teachers and educators in the Word should be about. Uh, speaking only what's been said and not what people think. As you attend to the things the Spirit says in Holy Convention and begin to apply knowledge of the Holy to your daily lives, each grain of wheat began to die to the evil works of, of, of the children of the adversary being buried at your baptism. Therefore, as we die a little more through the words uh, we receive, 
the wisdom of those words began to purge us from dead works that we may worship our Father who has pardoned us of our past criminal acts against him. Wisdom also teaches that that one teaches one rather that being resurrected as a newborn babe, one must be nurtured and cultured in the goings of the Spirit among us. And as showers of blessings are poured uh, 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 upon the blossom that has begun to bud, and one begins to testify against Lucifer and the works of his children, personal shortcomings teaches us uh, that the battle is not yours. But you've been planted by the Spirit to testify against the adversary of the Elohim of Israel. Now, most people think the battle is theirs. That's why every time you do something wrong, somebody up in your stuff. Every time you say you can, you can say somebody uh, something to somebody, and they all up in your stuff. We have programs set up in here for the kids and so forth, and the folks get to talking to these folks, kids, and folks want to crack somebody's jaw. You know why? We're not walking humbly and justly before our God. We're not walking on uh, uh, one accord. Moreover, now is the time for the wheat to bear fruit because the war is also against the sins in our flesh to fortify us with the gifts of the Spirit as well as to protect us from the powers of sin which so easily beset us being still flesh and blood. He says chapter 42 and verse 1 through verse 25. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1 through verse 25. I always have, a, you know, from time to time, I'm, I'm always confronted with brothers coming to me, well, you know, you didn't do this. I asked you to do this, and you didn't do that. I asked you to do this, and you didn't do that. And from the first day you met me, I've never tried to do anything to you but good. Mm. What have I done wrong to you? Mm. You know, but a lot of people get off into, well, I want you to do this, well, maybe I don't want to do that. You ever think of it? Maybe I've already gone the two miles I'm supposed to go. Uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 42, in verse 1 through verse 25. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Euro Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. Amen. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. He ain't talking about heaven now. He's talking about in the earth and the islands, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 5. Thus says Elohim, Yahweh, he that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath up unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein, I, Yahweh, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand and will keep you and give you for a covenant of the people for a light of the Euro Gentiles to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am Yahweh. That is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things will come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Praise Yah. Sing unto Yahweh a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth. You see what he's saying? He said, sing unto Yahweh a new song. That song you sang yesterday ain't good enough. See? When we get back in the book of Revelation, we read about the 144,000 that sing a new song that couldn't nobody else know but them, right? It's the same thing with you today. This is why you hear the truth and you talk to folks till you blew in their face and they don't hear it. Go on and read, brother. Yes, sir, verse 10. Sing unto Yahweh a new song and his praise from the end of the earth. You that go down to the sea and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities they have lift up their voice, the villages that Kedah does inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Hmm. Let them give glory unto Yahweh, 
and declare his praise in the islands. Yahweh shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Praise Yah. I have long time held my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs, and I will make the rivers, islands, and I will dry up the pools. Hmm. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Since the first day that you come to NCCI, haven't he been in the process of doing those things? Huh? Okay, go ahead, brother. Verse 17. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images that say to the molten images, you are our gods. Hear, you deep, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant? Hmm. All deep as my messenger that I sent. Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as Yahweh's servant? Seeing many things, but thou observeth not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. Yahweh is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Praise Yah. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth, <coughs> for a spoil, and none says, Restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Yaakov for a spoil? and Israel to the robbers. Did not Yahweh he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. And it hath set him on fire round about, yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. Right, uh, I come from pride. Isaiah chapter 57 and 10 through 59 and 21. Isaiah chapter 57 and 10 through 59 and 21. Prison house to the saints that they cap in the cap to the soul of men. Shoot. Shoot. That's what shoot is, brother. <laughs> Go ahead and read, man. He says, chapter 57, verse 10. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way, yet said of thou not, there is no hope. Thou hast found the life of thine hand, therefore thou were not grieved. Right, I found the life of my hand. I'm doing good, doing all right. Got me a good car, got me a nice house. I either I got me an expensive apartment, got me a Lexus out there in the driveway. I'm doing pretty good. I'm able to wear clean, nice clothes every day or whenever I want to. When I need something, I'm able to go buy it. So, you know, I'm okay. Right. Go on and read, brother. I heard somebody got shot over there on your street. What, three folks, huh? Yeah, I was looking to see if that's your address. <laughs> huh? Two down. Okay, okay, okay. Go ahead and I'll read, Steve. Verse 11. And of whom have you been afraid or feared? Right, have you feared the Lord? Have we, let's just ask ourselves a question. When in our life have we really feared God? Ask yourself, when have you really feared? Don't we still do the things that we want to do? Don't we? we well, you don't brother. fear. We can't fear something. We can't see. 
That's right. We don't fear. He ain't standing right there. Right. You don't get knocked down right there as soon as you do it, like we do do our kid. Take our kid, they do something. Come here. Pow, pow, pow. It don't happen to us like that, so we go on in our pernicious ways, don't we? Right. You know why? We think we got a handle on God. Mm. Yeah. Go on to read, brother. Verse 11. And of whom have you been afraid or feared that you have lied? Right. I'm going to do everything you tell. When I get my baptism, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Right. Go on, brother. And have not remembered me, nor laid it to your heart. Hmm. Have not I held my peace even of old, and thou fear of me not? I will declare your righteousness and your works, but they shall not profit you. Hmm. When you cry, let your, com your companies deliver you, but the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall take them, but he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land, and shall inherit my holy mountain. Yeah, but you go on and trust in your friends. Go on and keep trusting in your friends, your friends that you put so much stock in. Oh, this is a very intelligent person. Mm -hmm. Right. Go on and read, brother. Like I said, the writings of Paul are hard to be understood because Paul had a whole lot of intelligence. Paul was an intellectual. Why you think you always send it to them white folks? See, but he didn't send us to the white folks. He sent us to Jake. And you got to speak on a level where Jake can understand what you're saying. Go on and read, bro. Verse 14. And shall say, cast you up. Cast you up. Prepare the way. Take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Amen. For thus says the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. Amen. For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always angry, but the spirit should fail before me and the souls which I have made. Mm -hmm. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I angry and smote him. I hid me and was angry, and he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. Hmm. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the lips. Hmm. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, says Yahweh. Okay, brother. Verse 18. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Yeah, brother. brother. Okay, go ahead. Appreciate it. Thank you. Go ahead, Steve. Verse 18. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off. And to him that is near, says Yahweh, and I will heal him. I will heal him. See, all you got to do is worship, do it, do the work you're supposed to do, and he's going to hear you. But he ain't going to hear you when you go half-stepping. See, you have to put, uh, 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 like they say, Yahweh, see, uh, uh, on these teams and so forth, they ask us to give 110%. Yahweh ain't going to ask you for 100%. And we don't even want to put forth that 100%. Go ahead, brother. Verse 20. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. And every time you see them, it's mire and dirt spewing out of their mouth. Go ahead, brother. Verse 21. Why, this is going to tell you why that happens. Go ahead and read it, brother. There is no peace, says my Elohim, to the wicked. Amen. Go ahead and read, man. He says, chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their Elohim. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight approaching to Elohim. Hmm. Why have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? 
Why have we afflicted our soul and our take of no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Amen. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast, an acceptable day to Yahweh? Right. Will you walk around acting holy and then call this a fast to Yahweh? Go ahead, brother. Verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Hmm. Is it not to deal your bread to the hungry, and that you bring the poor that are cast out to your house? Will you see the naked, that you cover him, and that you hide not yourself from your own flesh? Ask yourself a question. How many poor people have you seen in the street that you've invited to your house? Read, man. Verse 8. Not understanding, it might have been an angel of the Lord. And you might have lost a very, very great opportunity. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. And the righteous and your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of Yahweh shall be your real God. Then shall you call, and Yahweh shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here am I. If you take away from the midst of you the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speak in vanity, and if you draw out your soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noon. Amen. And Yahweh shall guide thee continually, and satisfy your soul in drought, and make fat your bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. Praise Yah. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Uh, verse 11 says, uh, verse 10 says, and if you... And if you draw out your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall your light rise in obscurity and the, your darkness be as the noonday. And Yahweh shall guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and make fat your bones and you shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. In other words, you'll, be a, you'll always have an abundance of love and information for folks, won't you? Go ahead, brother. We got the soul, man, so let me bread alone, so it's both spiritual and natural still. Of course. Of course, you got to do both. You gotta, if you don't experience the natural, how can you, how can you save the spiritual? But you got to uh, uh, experience the natural to, to know what that's all about before so that you can see either the evil in it or the goodness in it and learn from the experience. But go ahead and I'll read, Steve. Verse 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Shabbat, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Shabbat a delight, the holy of Yahweh, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shall you delight yourself in Yahweh, and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. For the mouth of Yahweh have spoken it. Right. He said, if you keep my Sabbath, if you honor me and honor my Sabbath and so forth and so on, I'm going to do this for you and I'm going to do that for you, right? Folks are quick to say, man, I don't feel like going to church. I'm going to take me a sabbatical, right? We know who's behind that then, don't we? Because Yahweh, Yahweh didn't give us any reason for not keeping the Sabbath except what? Uncleanness. Go ahead and read, brother. It's Yahweh sales. don't care what we think. He don't care what we think. He said, look, this is what I want you to do. Take this in and run with it. See? He didn't ask you, what do, what do you think about this? Right. And 
my ways are not your ways. That's why you ain't been consumed. Because if our thoughts was his thought and our ways was his way, we'd have to be taken out this earth because we all know that we are people most miserable. Man, can't neither one of us, can't neither one of us say what we will not do tomorrow. We just have to wait till the situation and circumstances presents itself, then we'll know one. But right now, we don't know what we're going to do. This is why we lean upon Yahweh and pray that his spirit will protect us at all times. Go ahead and read, brother. He says, chapter 59, verse 1, Behold, Yahweh's head is not shorter that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. <laughs> But your iniquities have separated between you and your Elohims, mm. your Elohim, I'm sorry, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue have muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleader for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Mm. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dies, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever go of their end shall not know peace. Hmm. Therefore is judgment far from us, neither does justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold, obscurity for brightness, but we walk in darkness. Why? Because we allow these things. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. Now, understanding now, uh, this is this is a uh, 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 supplication that the prophet himself is making. See, everybody expect everybody to walk around holy, floating through the air this high. Right? It's not so. It's not so. The Messiah didn't even float in the air. It's not so. You're gonna come when you come to church. You're gonna find the same thing that you find out in the street there. People. People that are, are trying to strive to, to, uh, in righteousness and in and good worship and, and worshiping good work so that they'll be found worthy to ob ob obtain the glory that Yahweh has promised us. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse, it says, chapter 59, verse 11. We roar all like bears hmm. and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against Yahweh, and departing away from our Elohim, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. And judgment is turned away backward. And justice standeth a fall, for truth is falling in the street, and equity cannot enter. Mm. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. He that departs from evil does what? Makes himself a prey. And Yahweh saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Go ahead, brother. Verse 16. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate, and in heaven of salvation upon his head, 
and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay very to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay, recompense. So shall they fear the name of Yahweh from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of Yahweh shall lift up a standard against him. Hmm. And the Redeemer shall come to Yehuda and unto them that turn from transgression in Yaakov, says Yahweh. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says Yahweh. My spirit that is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth, nor out of the mouth of your seed, nor out of the mouth of your seed, seed says Yahweh, from henceforth and forever. Amen and amen. As a people blessed of Yahweh to obtain the gospel of salvation, if one is not mindful, the hidden faults which accompanies pride will cause the soul to build a shield of self-protection and become so sensitive that hostility from deep anguish will spring forth when one's pride is just touched just a little. But this shows that pride, slewfulness, strivings, and the lack of faithfulness has set one on fire uh, 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 and a soul is burned, yet we don't even consider that we're being burned by the true and living God because of the things that we bring forth. But as it is said, <clears throat> Some people just don't realize who the battle is against, nor where the war is to be fought. Some don't understand that Yahweh is waging war against the sin in our flesh as well as uh, uh, against the powers of gross darkness in which the saints shine as lights. Let's go into Job and see what Job had to say about some of these things. Job chapter 22 and verse 2 through verse 30. Job chapter 22. And verse 2 through verse thirty. Verse Yo, chapter 22, verse 2. Can a man be profitable unto Elohim, as he that is wise may be profitable unto himself? <laughs> is it any pleasure to the Almighty that you are righteous, or is it gain to him that you make your ways perfect? <laughs> Will he reprove you for fear of you? Will he enter with you into judgment? Is not your wickedness great? and your iniquities infinite? For you have taken a pledge from your brother for naught and stripped the naked of their clothing. Thou hast not given water to the weary to drink, and thou hast withholden bread from the hungry. But as for the mighty man, he had the earth, and the honorable man dwelt in it. Thou hast sent widows away empty, and the arms of the fatherless have been broken. Therefore snares are round about you, and sudden fear trouble of you. Hmm. A darkness that you can, can of not see, an abundance of waters cover you. Is not Elohim in the height of heaven? And behold, the height of the stars, how high they are. And thou saith, how does Elohim know? Can he judge through the dark clouds? Hmm. Thick clouds are a covering to him that he seeth not, and he walketh in the circuit of heaven. Hast thou marked the old way which wicked men have trodden, which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown with a flood, which said unto Elohim, Depart from us, and what can the Almighty do for them? Hmm. Yet he filled their houses with good things, but the counsel of the wicked is far from me. The righteous see it and are glad, and the innocent laugh them to scorn. Whereas our substance is not cut down, 
but the remnant of them, the fire, consumed. Whereas our substance is not cut down, but the remnant of them, the fire, consumed. Acquaint now yourself with him, and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto you. Receive, I pray you, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you shall be built up. You shall put away iniquity far from your tabernacles. Then shall you lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be your defense, and you shall have plenty of silver. For then shall you have your delight in the Almighty, and shall lift up your face unto Elohim. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Hmm. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, There is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. Hmm. He shall deliver the island of the innocent, and it is delivered by the pureness of your hands. Okay, my brother, let's go into St. Matthew 12 and verse 25 through uh, verse 45. St. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 25 through verse 45. you got to get up and stand out there and just get to hollering and shouting against the Holy Ghost. What this means, when you stand in front of things that the Holy Ghost is doing, when you start to talk down on things that the Holy, uh, that the Holy Ghost is doing, this is hindering the works of the Holy Ghost. This is speaking against the Holy Ghost, and these are things that we will not be forgiven from. We will not be forgiven for these things. Ain't no doubt about it. We can believe what we want to. But go ahead and read, brother. Verse 33. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. <laughs> oh, generation of poisonous snakes, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bring forth evil things. And all you hear about them, from them, is something that somebody else is doing. Something they don't like. Something they don't want to deal with. There's always some evil going on out of their mouth. You know why? They're in the process of hindering the works of the Holy Ghost. But we took her turn around and say, hey, friend. Mm -hmm. Read. Hey, last thing 
mouth <coughs> would also be when you say like uh, um, it's, it's really like the work of the God of Israel when you um, say that this is Satan's doing. Mm -hmm. Like giving Satan the credit for what the spirit is actually doing. Mm -hmm. Sure. You can tell the words of that said the devil because the heat just sin. The Holy Ghost ain't gonna sin, bro. And the Holy Ghost ain't gonna put nothing in front of you to cause you to sin. Okay. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 36. <clears throat> but I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. How many of y'all talk in your sleep? <laughs> huh? I know I huh? Do, bro. How many of us <clears throat> just get to talking and just get to running off at the mouth and start at A and N up at Z? Mm. Talked about everything, right? And all those words. The angel of the Lord just standing right there writing all them words. Now you can be judged by those words. Were those words good for edifying or uh, uh, were they not good to the use of edifying? This is what you have to be careful of. You're taught the things that are good for edifying, so always use what you've received for edifying of the body. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse. I mean, don't make no difference what somebody else does. Don't worry about what somebody else does. That's a contest between them, God, and the adversary, the devil. What you do is make sure you do what you got to do, and if you can go over there and help him out of that fight, go help him come out of that fight. Yeah, that was a good, a good illustration in Matthew 23, when Yahshua says, you know the scribes and Pharisees think see the most here, right? Mm -hmm. the law. Mm -hmm. like, the truth of things uh, concerning, you know, to do good, then you do that, but don't do that thing. Don't do that, don't do that thing. Don't follow their ways, because they say they ain't doing it. Right, right. And some of us around here, brother, we say, mm -hmm. we don't do it. Mm -hmm. We claim how much we love the God of Israel. But what I do is this. I look at the works. Works is dead, right? Huh? Because faith without works is dead. You mm -hmm. can believe, but you still have to do works. Right. Because we know that know how to go and build a heart. Right. And you can just sit down and say, "Come to me." Right. Faith is our work. Without works is dead, and worth without works without faith is dead. Don't read, bro. Verse thirty-seven. But by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Hmm. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we will see a sign from you. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Yonah, and behold, a greater than Yonah is here. The queen of Sheba shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Slomo, and behold, a greater than Slomo is here. Listen to what he said. The queen of Sheba shall rise up in the judgment with this generation mm -hmm. and shall condemn it. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear what? The wisdom of Solomon. Mm -hmm. To hear the wisdom of Solomon. But when we look around, we can hear other things out of one chapter. One chapter that was written in the song in, in the Bible about that, we hear a whole history of things that really did not take place. Because when it was mentioned it's the Queen of Sheba here, when we go and look where she came from, she came from South Yemen. But a lot of people say, no, this is, uh, you know, it's a, uh, 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 Ham had a son named, uh, named Sheba. And that's where he came from. Sheba said the queen of Sheba, not Sheba. He was talking about South Yemen. That's where that platinum is, is, is extracted from, right? Okay. And when you check the mode of the transportation that this sister used when she came up to Jerusalem, she used camels, didn't she? Africans don't use camels. Yeah. Go on to read, brother. Verse 43, Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he says, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swell, and garnished. Then he come in with his slick talk, 
showing you all these nicey, nicety, niceties that you like, that we like personally, right? Then he show us all the house of swept and garnished, right? We've been baptized and all this stuff, right? Go on to read, brother. Verse 45. Then go up he and take us with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. In other words, in, all, in order for us to resist, uh, 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 not to become, fall under this, what, what, what was our instruction? Resist the adversary, and he will flee from you. And that's all we have to do is resist them, see? Now, the things we've read, this is why we must be careful to never cause the light to dim in the face of adversity. However, this warns uh, the saints that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit causes one to fall. Yet, if we don't blaspheme but seek the glorious face of Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, rising early to worship and to seek, and, and to seek it, the prey, Surely Yahweh's mercy endures forever. James chapter 4 and verse 5 through verse 17. James chapter 4 and verse 5 through verse 17. James chapter 4 and verse 5 through verse 17. James is the book back behind Hebrews. It might not be the first book behind, yeah, it's the first book behind Hebrew. James chapter 4 and verse 5 through verse 17. Verse 5. Do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Hmm. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he says, Elohim resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to Elohim. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Not him. Jake. You can't tell Jake now, because Jake is touchy, boy. Jake is so touchy. We used to call him tusk hogs when I was coming up. You know, you got them guys, y'all used to tell them jokes and talk about each other's mama and everything. But there's one dude running there, you know not to say nothing to that brother, did you? Right. Didn't you? You know why? You knew not to say nothing out of the way of him because he'd be all over you. And that's the same way some of us are in this congregation. We cannot stand our pride to be touched in no way, shape, form, or fashion. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8. Draw nigh to Elohim, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Adonai, and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. Hmm. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you that judge another? Go to now, you that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue their year and buy and sell and get gain. Hmm. Whereas you know not what shall be on the next day. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appear for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that you ought to say, if Yah will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. Therefore, to him that knows to do good and do it not, to him is sin. Uh, chapter 5 and verse 7 through verse 20, my brother. <laughs> verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, 
unto the coming of the Adonai. Behold, the farmer waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and have long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Hmm. Be you also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Adonai draweth not. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Adonai for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patient of Yod and have seen the end of the Adonai, that the Adonai is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with all in the name of the Adonai. And when you look at that, you can see it's a, it's a big difference between being sick and being afflicted. See, when we get to the place to where we are afflicted, then that means that we have entertained an unclean spirit, right? Sickness don't necessarily mean that you have, in, uh, that you have acquired an unclean spirit. Yeah. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse... 15, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Adonai shall raise him up. And if you have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Why? Because you prayed for him. That's why he'll be forgiven. Go ahead, brother. Verse 16, confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. Amen and amen. 1 John 5, in verse 1 through verse 20. 1 John 5, 1 through verse 20. Now, that don't mean that you just, oh, yeah, I believe he's the son of God. That don't mean that now. <laughs> Go ahead and read, brother. And everyone that loveth him, that begot, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of Elohim when we love Elohim and keep his commandments. For this is the love of Elohim, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of Elohim overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Hmm. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Yahshua is the son of Elohim? This is he that came by water and blood, even Yahshua HaMashiach, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bear witness, because the spirit is true. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Hmm. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of Elohim is greater. For this is the witness of Elohim, which he have testified of his son. 
He that believeth on the Son of Elohim have the witness in himself. He that believeth not Elohim have made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that Elohim gave of his Son. And this is the record that Elohim have given us, given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that have the Son have life, and he that have not the Son of Elohim have not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of Elohim, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of Elohim. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. That don't mean he going to always say yes, because he hear you. <coughs> Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 15. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Right, it's still a petition, ain't it? Go ahead, brother. Verse 16. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask. He shall ask. Right? If you see your brother sin a sin unto death, you shall ask, right? You shall ask your father to forgive him from that sin unto death, right? <coughs> okay, go ahead, brother. That's all you got to do. Go ahead, brother. He shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. Hmm. There's a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. Mm -hmm. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is not a sin, and there is a sin, I'm sorry, not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of Elohim sinneth not, but he that is begotten of Elohim keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not. And we know that we are of Elohim, and the whole world lies in wickedness. And we know that the son of Elohim is come and have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are and we are in him that is true even in his son Yahshua HaMashiach. This is the true Elohim and eternal life. Amen and amen. Now sometimes people worship but the heart has no fear. This is why the heart isn't overwhelmed with love for the things sanctioned and sanctified by the Holy Ghost. We go about our business daily as Yahweh gives us strength, but how much of your time and substance do you dedicate to the master's service each day? Walking in the commandments only benefits man. But just how do you do Yahweh's service, or what do you profit our Elohim who requires of you a profit uh, 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 through him that is being glorified in us personally. Purpose, I say. Whatever your purpose is at NCCI, whether good or evil, put all your strength into it with knowledge and conviction because you shall reap what you've sown. The master is going to judge the lions and the lionesses and he will not throw his, his chosen servants out with the dirty waters of judgment. Malachi 3, in verse 1 through verse 18. Malachi chapter 3, in verse 1 through verse 18. Malachi chapter 3, in verse 1 through verse 18. Yahweh and offering in righteousness. 
Then shall the offering of Yehuda and Jerusalem be pleasant unto Yahweh, as in the days of old, and as in former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow, and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, says Yahweh of hosts. Hmm. For I am the most high Elohim, I change not. Therefore you sons of Yaakov are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers you are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says Yahweh of hosts. But you said, when shall we return? Will a man rob Elohim? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, but you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, says Yahweh of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Ten a lot, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm saying they tell the people the tithes about blessing, but that's how does that have something to do with your salvation? It's in the book blessing. You know the people believe in the church that wants to pay all these tithes, they can get a blessing, but I'm saying is it pertaining to your salvation too? That's what I want to know for you. Mm -hmm. See, this is what they rely on. It says bring you the tithes into the storehouse and that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now therewith, <laughs> saith Yahweh of hosts, I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not be room enough to receive. What they do, they say, I got to pay my tithes so I can get, so Elohim can give me some, some more natural substance. That's all they're after. They're after paying the tithes, hoping that, like, like Eddie Long walk around, when they be passing around the place, he'd be standing on the side, that seed, that seed, right. See, the people want to put in their seed money and watch it grow into a big plant, you see. But it don't work like that, bro. But he planted it in this life. Of course it does. <laughs> it goes wherever he wanted to go. But Elder, I'm sorry. But I'm saying when you read it, would you say is it pertaining to your salvation? Because we know it's just people blessing. We talk about natural things. Yes, you, this doesn't pertain, right. pertain to your salvation. All this is natural things. Yes, the ties are natural things. <laughs> On that level. That, that, that the church talk about, they talk about the 10% of natural things, right? Okay, go ahead. Wasn't it also that when the, um, the Levitical priesthood was set up for the services of the God of Israel, therefore when our fathers began not to tithe and give those offerings, that they had to go out and pretty much fend for themselves. So the God of Israel had been robbed of his service, and it also said that in, in doing this also, you have robbed the national <coughs> people, meaning that the <coughs> right. 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 The church ran. This is why different kings, when you go back through there, the people had got to doing real good. you always really pouring it on them, right? And what happened? They had to go find the book of the law, right? They had everybody staying in the temple, didn't they? The temple just went, uh, uh, one of the kings went up and took all the, the gold off some of the things and the brass and sea down and uh, a lot of things, man, just to, to giving it to the enemies and so forth. You see, all those were natural things. That, that they relied on, but you got to look at the covenant. The covenant promised them natural things. Nobody going to want your land, you're going to have plenty of food, have plenty of babies and so forth. All of that was a natural thing. But what we're going to do, we're going to go in a different direction with this when, uh, when Steve gets through with it, though. Go ahead and read it, brother. Malachi chapter 3, verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says Yahweh of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land, says Yahweh of hosts. Mm -hmm. Your words have been styled against me, says Yahweh. Yet you say, what have we spoken so much against you? You have said, it is vain to serve Yahweh. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before Yahweh of hosts. And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. 
Yea, they that tempt Elohim are even delivered. Then they that feared Yahweh spake often one to another, and Yahweh hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared Yahweh and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, says Yahweh of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth Yah and him that serveth him not. Mm -hmm. Okay, my brother, I want to go no further than that. Now, if a man uses 90% of his, this talks about tithes. If a man uses 90% of his time doing his mind's desire and 10% in holy day worship and various service concerning uh, uh, what his purpose is uh, uh, on the earth, he finds that as reward, he hears and get more knowledge and understanding of what the Spirit says in the church and glorify and give thanks to, the, to Yahweh when Yahshua uh, uh, adds another soul to his body that Yahweh will be praised as his spirit is glorified in the soul that was added. It has nothing to do with natural things. It has to do with spiritual things simply because Yahweh is a spirit. And he that uh, uh, worship him must worship him what? In spirit and in truth. And a lot of natural things we have to do but we have to understand that Yahweh is working a spiritual thing among us. He's gathering together his elect from the four, uh, that's going to serve him in his kingdom. Uh, 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 Psalms chapter uh, 33 in verse 1 through verse 22. Psalm chapter 33 in verse 1 through verse 22. one. Rejoice in Yahweh, O you righteous, for praise is comedy for the upright. Hmm. Praise Yahweh with harp, sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto Yahweh a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of Yahweh is right, and all his works are done in truth. Hmm. Yahweh loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of Yahweh. By the word of Yahweh were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as in heat. He left up the depths in storehouses. Let all the earth be Yahweh. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For Yahweh spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Yahweh bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of Yahweh standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose Elohim is Yahweh, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Hmm. Yahweh looketh, looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike. He considereth all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of Yahweh is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for Yahweh. He is our help and our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in Yahweh because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Yahweh, be upon us according as we hope. You. Let, let your mercy be upon us, O Yahweh, according as we hope in you. Not in ourselves, 
not in man, but according as we hope in you. Chapter 66 and 1 through 67 and 7. 66 and 1 through 67 and 7. Verse 1, make a joyful noise unto Elohim, all you lands, sing forth the honor of his name, make his praise glorious, say unto Elohim, how terrible are you in your works, hmm. through the greatness of your power shall your enemies submit themselves unto you, Amen. all the earth shall worship you, and shall sing unto you, they shall sing to your name, come, and see the works of Elohim. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. He ruled by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. O oh, bless our Elohim, you people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard which holdeth our soul in life, and suffereth not our feet to be moved. Amen. For thou, O Elohim, have proved us. Thou hast tried us, as silver is tried. Thou broughteth us into the net. Thou laidest affliction upon our loins. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out into a wealthy place. I will go into thy house, with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows, which my lips have uttered, and my mouth have spoken when I was in trouble. Hmm. I will offer unto you burnt sacrifices of fatlings with the incense of rams. I will offer bullocks with goats. Come and hear all you that fear Elohim, and I will declare what he have done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Adonai will not hear me. But verily Elohim have heard me. He have attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be Yahweh, which have not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Elohim, be merciful unto us, and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Mm -hmm. Let the people praise thee, O Yahweh. Let all the people praise thee. O oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously, righteously, I'm sorry, and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise thee, O Yahweh. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and Yahweh, even our own Elohim, shall bless us. Elohim shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Amen and amen. And this will be done why when we get in the book of Revelation you're going to find that the whole, that the ones that are going to be saved are going to turn to Yahweh Elohim through the works that the children of Israel is doing during the uh, great tribulation period. See, the thing, from the things we've read, this is why we must be ever careful to be mindful of whose spirit it is that brought us together for his purpose. Although each of us were dripping in all the curses, Yahweh has cleaned us up, gave us a purpose, and gifts small and great, natural and spiritual, for, for our enrichment. This gives us access to our Father. So be careful. To show the wisdom of the spirit, O Israel, the spirit that records our every word and deed, either to make intercessions to the Father or to condemn us before his angels. <coughs> Let us remember that there is power in the word and that knowledge and understanding is received, is received as the life force of some. But then... The same attributes can prove to be very dangerous and unfruitful if the wisdom of sound judgment is not applied. Most of all, we must never cloud valid issues with thing one, things one profess but can't prove 
and must try not to intellectualize the doctrine. Because the, simple, the simplest approach is easy to be entreated, and the weakest of words will give a, a plainness of speech to all that hear. Therefore, let us worship and serve so that the Holy Spirit will direct us and, and serve us and not be found serving ourselves of Yahweh in the things freely given us as we foolishly try to direct the Spirit instead of allowing the Spirit to direct us. But let's hear the conclusion of this matter. Songs of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 1, through chapter 5 and verse 1. Songs of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 1, through chapter 5 and verse 1. Songs of Solomon is the book behind Ecclesiastes. Songs of Solomon, chapter 4, in verse 1, through chapter 5, in verse 1. Verse 1, Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove eyes within thy locks. Thou hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Mount Gilead. Now, he's talking about the church. He's talking about the house of Israel. But go ahead and read, brother. Verse 2, Thou teeth are like a flock of sheep that are even shorn, which came up from the washings, well, if everyone bear twins, and none is bearing them up. In other words, we must be very fruitful after baptism. We must be, uh, after our washing, we must be very fruitful in the things that we are given, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. Thou lips are like a thread of scarlet, and thou speech is comely. Thou temples are like a piece of a pomegranate within thy locks. Thou neck is like the tower of David, built for an armory, where on there hang a thousand bucklers, all shields of mighty men. And all of those bucklers belong to the, 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 the men, the, the, the servants of the true and living God. But go ahead and read, brother. Verse 5. Thou two breasts are like two young roes that are twins, which feed among the lilies. It, Judah and Israel, mm -hmm. uh, from the time that the houses were divided, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse Six, until the day break and the shadows flee away, I will get me to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. Hmm. Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in you. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse, with me from Lebanon. Look from the top of Amana, from the top of Shinur and Hermon, from the lion's den, from the mountains of the lepers. Covered all the mountains of Israel, right? Look down from the mountains of Israel and see what Yahweh has wrought in the holy city of Zion. So go ahead and read, brother. Verse 9. Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Thou hast ravished my heart with one of your eyes, with one chain of thy neck. This is why he said, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Mm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10. How fair is your love, my sister, my spouse? How much better is your love than wine? And the smell of thine ointments than all spices. Your lips, oh my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under thy tongue, and the smell of thy garment is as the smell of Lebanon. A garden encloses my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up. A fountain seal. A garden in clothes. We're family, right? A garden in clothes is my sister, my spouse. Outsiders cannot become a part unless they become a part of this, of this family, right? Why? Because it's like a, 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 a spring that's shut up and a fountain that has a seal on the mouth of it. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 13. Thou plants are an orchard of pomegranates with pleasant fruits. Camphire with spikenard, spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with all the chief spices. These are all the family members that we have. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 15. A fountain of gardens, a well of living waters, and streams from 
Lebanon. Hmm. Awake, O north wind, and calm thou south. Blow upon my garden that the spices thereof may flow out. Amen. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruit. Amen. I am coming to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, old friends, drink, yea, drink abundantly, old beloved. Amen and amen. As we see, Yahweh has a great, very great love for his church. This is why he sent his Messiah to die that we could be redeemed because, like Paul said, glory and honor is to the Jew first. And it's through our redemption that the whole earth will be redeemed and that man will learn how to study war no more and how to love his neighbor as well as his, uh, uh, his Elohim. So it's been said, so it is written, even so come Lord Yahshua and save Jacob out of all of his troubles.